Hey, what's up? Hi, Mike D from Killswitch Engage, and this is Lean Air Rock. Hi, Mike. Hi. Killswitch Engage back to Milan, so welcome back to Thank Milan and to Lean Air Rock. Okay, great. So, Incarnate is the seventh album of the band, and actually, I read some already about it, and I heard the record, of course. It's not, as you stated, uh, a proper concept album, but there's a concept anyway behind it, there's a message, and so it's a sort of concept, and it, it represents like an introspective path. Uh, so, can you tell us more about it and which are the demons, actually, that you're fighting with? Okay, well, that has nothing to do with me. Um, uh, as far as the artwork goes, it was a very organized idea. Jesse okay. had a dream uh, that a man who was rooted into the ground was, uh, had cranes overhead, which yeah. mean good luck, and then snakes crawling up the ground, which means bad. So kind of a good and bad going after this person in the middle. Yeah. Um, it was very specific. So um, coming up with a cover took a very long time, like probably 40 or 50 different covers I went through, trying to find the right one that fit with the description that Jesse gave me. Okay. Like I said, very, very specific. But did um, you start to work to it before? I mean, when you had the idea of what the album would I have been about? Start, I always start before even lyrics are written. All right. Because I got to get a jump on it and have as many ready so that they can say, no, 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 yes. Because <laughs> Jesse knows exactly what he wants when he sees it. So it's just a matter of coming up with that idea. Um, but the artwork throughout the entire record and uh, in the special edition and in the vinyl all is different pieces that form this one idea of, okay. of man having good and evil coming at him from all sides. So where, where the inspiration started this time and um, how do you think Incarnate is related uh, with the previous records? Uh, inspiration for me always comes from horror movies or just being graphic designer. I'm constantly doing stuff on my computer. Yeah. Uh, we all write music for the record. Uh, we go in our separate areas and we record demos and then we bring it to practice. Everyone yeah. listens, votes on what they like, talks about what they don't like. Uh, sometimes we'll go into Pro Tools and fix songs up uh, right there with everyone in the room and, and talk about why they need to be fixed or why they don't need to be fixed. And that's how we decide on uh, it, the music. Okay. And then the lyrics are always written afterwards once the music's finished. But Sometimes it can be hard for him because we'll bring him like 16 songs. Here you go! <laughs> okay. And, uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a little tough for him. So uh, lyrics always come later for Jesse and also for us. Well, I him. know that he writes, but as far as sticking it into yeah. the song uh, is always later once we've already had the idea formed so he can uh, map it out from there. And do you always have word about, uh, about the subject, on the subject? Uh, with Jesse or with Howard before, or it's something that the singer comes up with and uh, you don't actually discuss about it? And it, It's always nice when the singer does his own thing, that, that just means that every gear in the machine is working yeah. the way it's supposed to, doing their own jobs. Jesse is one of the only singers I've ever worked with though that you don't have to pick apart his lyrics, you don't have to find new adjectives, uh, he's just a poet. And yeah. what he says speaks to me personally, so I've never had to criticize any of his stuff. I, I love it. Okay. So as you already mentioned, you might own a graphic design company, which is called Dark Icon Designs. And uh, you've made all the covers for Kids Which Engage and various other pieces like merchandise, t-shirt, everything. Mm. Um, since the beginning, actually, yeah. you actually put these as a clause on the contract that, uh, or, or I mean... Well, maybe I did. I think that was just so that we would have creative freedom, not because I'm a control freak. Okay. Um, because sometimes, you know, record companies will force you into things that you don't want to do. Yeah. So, it's, it's so having that written in at least makes sure that the band can say yes or no at the very end, rather than okay. have someone 
strong arming us and saying, no, this is the cover now. Right. But are the visuals uh, equally important as the music for, for you? And um, do you approach this job differently when it's for your band, Kiss Witch Engage, or for other bands like Crowbar mm -hmm. that you work for? My job is to make whatever the band wants look good. So mm. even if it's a subject I don't like or particularly care for, um, is not you know they give me the ideas, I put it together. I may not like it, but it's my job to get it to a point that I I think okay I can turn this turd sure. <laughs> into a castle. <laughs> um, so in that way, um, I just try to stay unbiased as far as that goes, uh, especially with Kill Switch. But I do use a lot of my favorite stuff for Kill Switch just because you know it's my it's my baby. Um, I've always done this my entire life. Uh, that's why I started the graphic design company. It's why I even got into graphic arts in the first place. I knew a lot of bands that needed work, needed stickers, flyers, and stuff like that. And I said, "Oh, I can do that. That's really easy to do, and I like to do it." So uh, we we've always been this band that keeps everything close knit, very DIY, and does the production on the records and and all that stuff. I'll do the artwork for it. Uh, just keep it in the family, so yeah. so we all have a say, and we're not our our ideas aren't stolen by somebody else and, and replaced. Um, I don't know if I answered every one of those questions. Yes, that's okay. <laughs> so you have a very young audience. Uh, do you leave that area as a responsibility, in a sense, for you know the message that you give visually and lyrically and musically? It is important that your audience doesn't die off. <laughs> We're getting to that age where we could have possibly people not, okay. not being around anymore or even listening to metal. It's very important to keep younger kids interested. Maybe our father will take his son to some of our shows, which is a really cool thing. Uh, we take a lot of uh, younger bands out just because of that, just to give a fresh outlook. Some of these younger kids may not even listen to metal and all of a sudden they'll come to our show and, and, and maybe we'll turn them on to another cool band or something like that. It's, it's all kind of relative and I feel like metal is that one family, okay. family oriented thing that you can be a part of and really be excited about. Um, so yeah, um, it, it is important to keep the younger fans uh, in there too. Okay. Not that we write towards younger fans, but uh, we like them to come. Okay. <laughs> uh, since the beginning, you defined a certain sound, which is very particular uh, and unique, um, very personal. It's a kind of trademark. Um, is it the result of some kind of natural evolution since the beginning, or there was some kind of master plan you work hard at? Like, yes, we want to be unique, so we must create something new. You know, because it's very recognizable. So. Well, thank you. It, it's really hard to say, I want to be unique and actually have it come out unique. Um, I, I really feel like the sound of this band is, is the members, the gears that are in motion. Uh, myself, Adam, and Joel have been there since the beginning, and I feel like that's sort of the trademark sound that, that still resonates. Now, um, Justin writes a ton of stuff too, uh -huh. but keeping in mind who he's writing for, and uh, I think it really works in that respect. I think that's why we, we've been able to keep that sort of sound in, 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 in our contained unit. And there was more questions in there. Um, you've been defined also the founders of Metalcore. Is it something you feel comfortable with and proud of? It's cool to be a part of a new genre, to be to make a new thing. Um, getting back to your last question, we all came from hardcore bands, so it was very easy for us to adapt some of those styles, DIY punk, um, yeah. um, even even a lot of the breakdowns and stuff like that, and put it into metal. When we first started, we did say we want we we've, we've been in. Hardcore bands that acted like metal bands so long. Why can't we just be a metal band? Like <laughs> we just want to be metal. So when we started, we just said that we're just a metal band. We're not a. And there was no such thing as metal core back then. So we were just doing what we thought was right and adding this underground thing to this uh, mainstream thing. And I think that's how we came about that. But um, at first, the title kind of worried me. Mm. Uh, metal core, because then you get pigeonholed and stuck in a certain area. Yeah. 
Um, hopefully, it's not what everyone thinks of when they think of us, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. My 12-year-old self would look at me now and be like, that's fucking awesome. So I kind of don't have a problem with it. It's neat to carve out your own niche in metal, and I think that's the only way that metal can continue and get yeah. bigger is if you add more things to it rather than just keeping it stale, same, same, same. Okay. And Jesse came back in the band after 10 years in 2012. Did you always remain in contact with him after he left the band? Or how actually it happened that you met again and decided to collaborate once again to the band? It was a little weird when he left. Um, I took it a little bit hard, harder than most. Everyone kept in contact with him. Um, it took a year or two to really mend fences, but we did and everything was cool. And in that respect, we wanted to show fans that there was no hard feelings. Uh, the very record after he left, the first one with Howard, there's backups with Jesse on it. We yeah. just wanted to show the fans that, hey, things happen, people leave, people come back. It's just part of life, you know? Yeah. Some people aren't ready for the road. The road is not the easiest thing in the world. Uh, it was great to have him back. Uh, he uh, has been practicing his craft for a long time and has gotten so much better from 10 years ago when he was in the band mm -hmm. to now. Uh, it's like night and day. And it's really great to visit a lot of these countries that we've visited a few times, but he's visiting for the first time. We okay. get to see it through new eyes and how excited he is and stoked on things that maybe we take for granted now because we've been there a few times. Um, we are definitely the luckiest people in the world to have a job like this and it's really easy to see yeah. with Jesse around because he's just <laughs> excited about everything. It's a light socket! Oh my goodness! You know, he's, <laughs> he's an excitable guy and it's, okay. it's really cool. It's, it's better than having that dark cloud of people just being mm. upset all the time. You know? And how do you think Jesse and Howard Jones are compatible as singers, performers and writers? Both totally different things. Um, both great at what they do. Uh, well, yeah, I don't know. They're both good. Both good. Uh, you know? It's some, a some different things. situation for you, or it's like, uh, since, you know, it's still Kill Switch Engage, it's, uh, it's the same but different. Uh, how is it is, it's the same <laughs> but different because it's, re it's revitalized the band having Jesse come back. It's really just, uh, we, were, we were, like I said, very jaded in, the, yeah. in this kind of hole. And then Jesse brings the sun and we're like, oh yeah, we can really like this again and have a good time. So uh, he's just brought sunlight Fantastic. into the, the whole thing. Uh, you contributed to two movie soundtracks, which is Freddy vs. Jason and Resident Evil Apocalypse, and video game soundtracks like Sleeping Dogs or God of War. How did it happen and what is it that is so cinematic about your music? What do you think? Usually it's Roadrunner Records, a record label getting in touch with video games and stuff like that. And we always are so excited to be part of any of that stuff in movies and it's, it's a really cool thing to be a part of anything yeah. let alone horror movies which is my favorite and video <laughs> games which is another one of my favorites or even wrestling for that matter we had a song uh, WWE in the US used uh, called This Fire and, and I'm a huge wrestling fan none of the other guys are but it was just, it's just a neat thing to be a part of something bigger or something that you look up to um, there's no real different approach to writing stuff for that, except just knowing, okay, if this is like an entrance music for a guy, it's got to be BAM! It's got to have this big pop in the beginning, and then you can roll with whatever you do. Uh, with video games, it can be a lot more mellow, and then maybe amp up towards the end. Um, but it's a, it's a great thing to be part of, of uh, other things. Uh, you've been a band since 17 years now, uh, but you're still the new breed, actually. You're still the new wave of American metal. How is that? <laughs> so, what's the next level for Kill Switch Engage? Hmm, we're gonna probably play on the moon at some point. All right. We'll get a space shuttle, we'll play <laughs> Mars, maybe, for the colonists of Mars, possibly. Uh, everything that's happened to us thus far has just been a blessing and we've just been so excited every time we go out and do stuff or even just coming here and having people sing along to our new songs, it's just like, 
It's yeah. the greatest thing in the world. And, um, like I said, best job. There is there another level? I don't even know. You know, we just keep doing, we'll set goals and then just hit them pretty fast. The only thing I'd love to do is tour with Metallica. We have oh, not. Yeah. We did like a festival with them in Europe. Um, you know, God, the first four Metallica albums are like the best thing ever. So it would be killer to do something with them. That would be maybe another level for us. So hopefully James Solars will see these and will call you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey man. <laughs> Call. <laughs> <laughs> that would be really fun though. We've, we've, we've done a lot of other shows with some of our favorite acts, yeah. Anthrax, and yeah. never Megadeth either. I'd love to do something with those guys. That'd ah, be cool. pretty fun. In 2014, a uh, Grammy nomination for Kill Switch, Engage. How did it feel to lose a Grammy Award by <laughs> Black Sabbath? Which is it's pretty great. I mean, we actually we, we got two nominations. The first one was we lost to Motorhead, which is okay. yes. And then the second one, uh, we were, I remember we were walking the red carpet. And, and when you get nominated for these things, you know you're not going to win, but you want to go and bring your, your yeah. wife and stuff and have a fun time and get dressed up for once and walk the red carpet and just do it. Um, and we saw Jack Osborne on the, on the carpet. He's interviewing people. And, like, and he's like, so what do you think? You're going to win? And we're like, hell no, your dad's going to win. There's no way we're going to win. <laughs> Um, but he did. His dad won, yeah. <laughs> and rightfully so. I mean, Black Sabbath, just to be to be mentioned in a sentence with Anthrax, Black Sabbath, uh, and be nominated is, is a privilege and an honor. So I'm not sure that I really give too much credit to those awards. I don't know that they mean a lot to me, but but to be recognized in the only metal category of a yeah. hundred or so awards is, is pretty cool. So back to the album, um, we already said it's, it's like it's a kind of concept and it's a, a very spiritual album in a sense, uh, but in a clever, positive, sharp way, uh, like you know that after dark always the sun comes up. Sure. Um, that's kind of the kind of message, message that I got, but um, it's, uh, in some way what you're trying to say is that the depression is like the cancer of, you know, the modern times. I can see that and everyone gets depressed. Um, we've definitely got letters where people were depressed and maybe the album helped to get them out of it or a bad time and, and that feels really good that we can help some people. Maybe not everybody, but there are a few people out there that really uh, want to let us know, man, I, I, I battled this thing and, and I got through it because of the record and it feels, feels really good. And do you think that Incarnate can be the cure? So you suggest people to, I mean, to buy it and uh... <laughs> Buy it. It's, like, <laughs> it's the best pill you'll get. Oh, good. <laughs> Okay, so last question for today. So I know that the Kill Switch inspiration came from uh, Next Files episode. What about the Engage part? I knew we couldn't just call it Kill Switch. It just didn't sound right. It needed like a, some sort of emphasis on the end. And we had, I, I think I had a bunch of things. I can't remember any off the top of my head, but um, I came up with Kill Switch Engage and then I brought it to practice. At that point, it was just Adam, myself, and Joel practicing in a room. And we three founding members and I, I told them and they're like we hate that is the worst name they're like what is that Star Trek engaged number one what is that <laughs> crap and I was like yeah I mean it's pretty hard to pick a name and all names kind of suck but look at this logo that I did and yeah. I'm like okay we like it okay I sold them on the logo not the name so and it stuck so <laughs> see the visual is always important the visual <laughs> yes. judge a book by its cover <laughs> Okay, so very, very last thing. Um, do you think that Incarnate is like the end of Art Age 2.0 in terms of success and of the reaction of the people to it? Because it, that was a very successful album and very well accepted. So I appreciate that. Um, maybe. I like to hope so. Um, I know we got more stuff in us. I know uh, there'll be a 3.0 <laughs> okay. uh, very, very soon. Uh, I, I'm already starting to write for the next record, even though this one hasn't been out that long. But um, I think as long as we keep the core members, it's always going to be this thing. And I think people are going to be who our fans will, will dig it. Okay. Do you want to leave a message to the Italian fans? Any, right. any special thing that you want to say to them? Hey, thank you guys so much 
for believing in us still, um, despite member changes, all the things that we've been through. Um, you guys still buy our records, you still come to our shows, you still make great food here in Italy. Uh, D'Antonio. <laughs> so, uh, Homeland, thank you so much, you've not let us down. We appreciate it. Great. Actually, where do you come from? What's your, where from? Your family? Sicilian, I believe. Okay. So, from the south. No, no. <laughs> well, very passionate. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Mike. Thank you so See much. See you next time. Ciao. Ciao.